So the basic idea of gradient descent is to find uh, a good approximation or to, to try to approach the, the parameter vectors that uh, minimize minimize some function f of w, which could be the training error of a model with parameters w. And the idea was you start with a current choice for the parameter vectors and minimize locally around this wk and this uh, size of neighborhood is defined by eta, minimize a, a, a linear approximation. Okay. And so in, in formulas, in mathematical terms, we can write this as the output of a gradient step is the solution of a minimization problem that looks like this. Squared Euclidean norm plus, so this is all the objective function, f of wk plus w minus wk transpose times gradient wk. Okay. And this here is the local linear approximation. This term here is precisely this local linear approximation or this linear approximation at wk. And we, as I said before, in the beginning of the lecture, minimizing this linear approximation is trivial because we always go without bound towards the negative of the gradient forever to infinity. So we only, uh, we must restrict this minimization of the linear approximation to a, a neighborhood. And this is what this term does here. This first term, this squared Euclidean norm keeps the solution of this optimization problem close to the current uh, parameter vector wk. This couples or bounds somehow the, the, the updated uh, parameter vector to wk. Okay, so this, and this here is a, is a precise equivalent formulation of a gradient step. So this is exactly the same as uh, wk minus eta gradient wk. This is a simple exercise to verify that, that this minimization or that, that this optimization problem is minimized for this uh, gradient step or the result of this gradient step. Okay, so the next step towards generalizing gradient descent is now to say, hmm, why don't I use here the objective function itself instead of an approximation. So let's now use another update. We use the update argmin w one over two eta. And then the distance to the current parameter vector, Euclidean distance squared plus f of w. So instead of, of minimizing here the, or using here the uh, local linear approximation, we use the function itself, okay? Might be good. Instead of using approximations, use the, uh, the original object. Why not? And it turns out that this is also useful and this is actually called a proximal map, proximal map or proximal op operator of the function f. And this uh, repeating this proximal map is then called a proximal algorithm. And it turns out that also this proximal algorithm has nice convergence properties. So it converges to the minimum and it does so with reasonable speed. Um, however, the problem now here is we got a more complicated uh, minimization problem. Here we had to in gradient descent, we minimize essentially a convex quadratic function. Again, this here, this here is a convex quadratic function that we want to minimize. So it's somewhat easier than this here. This is this could be an arbitrary function because this f of w could be arbitrary. Of course, if f of w is also a convex quadratic function, then we are still minimizing a convex quadratic function. But in general, this this might be now more complicated to minimize. 
Okay, so why, why do the burden? Why do the burden now? It could be complicated, more complicated. Still, it might be converged, but it might, might need more computation. Well, the advantage now is it somewhat lends naturally to, an, to a, a, a variant of gradient descent that doesn't use parameters at all. Uh, and the idea is to, to somewhat replace this uh, distance measure here. So to, to measure the distance between uh, a model with parameter W and uh, a hypothesis, yeah, hypothesis map with parameter WK. We, in, in this form here, we use the, the squared Euclidean distance between the parameter vectors to measure this discrepancy. And uh, we now need to replace, we now need to find a, a generalization of this term, of this distance measure that doesn't use parameter vectors. And one idea is to compare, so how, how can we compare two hypothesis maps without comparing their parameters? Well, what we could do is we could compare them on a training set of feature vectors or a test set, let's call this test set. And we compare those two hypothesis maps via their, so let's call this this H and this here is then e H superscript K. Uh, compare these two hypothesis maps via their predictions on a test set. So they typically deliver different predictions and we can compute the squared this, uh, difference between them and average them over the test set. So over M data points. And we use this discrepancy on the test set as a replacement for this measure of, of, of distance between hypothesis maps. Okay, and if we now plug this in, what we end up with is an update that looks like this. So the, uh, again, it's an iterative method, an iterative method like gradient descent, but it doesn't work in terms of parameter vectors. It, it works or it's formulated in terms of hypothesis maps really hypothesis maps. So the next hypothesis map or the updated, this is the update, is uh, again, a solution of an optimization problem. And this here is an arbitrary model. This is any model, could be a decision tree, could be a deep neural network, uh, doesn't need to be parameterized. This is now any hypothesis space or model. And what we uh, what we then minimize is again uh, two term uh, sum of two terms. So the first term is this discrepancy measure uh, on the test set. plus another term, which is the objective function that we, that we want to, to minimize uh, originally in terms of, of the hypothesis. Okay. <clears throat> so again, this term here, this term forces the, the new hypothesis, HK plus one, to be not too far away from the current one, HK, which, which is now showing up here in, in this uh, discrepancy term. So this, this is like, uh, this forces the neighborhood. This defines the step size of the update. And this term here is the, the training error of, of, of this model H, the training error. And I mean, how, how can we solve such a minimization problem in, 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 uh, on a computer? How would you solve such a minimization problem? You have some objective function like the training error of a model of a decision tree, plus uh, some other terms that are uh, also functions of the predictions of the decision tree. So this actually could be interpreted as an uh, additional training data set with labels being the, the predictions obtained from the previous uh, uh, or from the current hypothesis map HK. So you could actually implement this uh, using a dot fit function. So as soon as you have a dot fit function for this hypothesis space, uh, you will be able to implement this minimization problem. Okay. So we have now an, a generalization of, of a gradient step that uses dot fit functions. And you need to 
repeat like in gradient descent where you repeat gradient steps you need to re repeat this dot uh, implementations of the dot fit function which minimizes this uh, uh, objective function or training error here okay this was uh, a bit of a bonus uh, uh, will not be uh, part of the of the coding assignment this extension but I think it's important uh, when we devote uh, time on building intuition of gradient descent and how to analyze it to maybe give to give some hints about how can we extend these ideas to, to non-parametric models because gradient descent uh, only works uh, for parameterized models it works on the it operates on the parameters of a model like the weights of a, a linear predictor or the weights and bias terms of a deep neural network and uh, this, this extension, what I've shown here, this doesn't need any parameters. It just needs a function that can solve, or it just needs a, a means to solve this optimization, this arc min problem here. And this often is available in a dot fit function for, for no, also for non-parametric models. So this, this uh, model here could be a decision tree or random forest. So how do you do gradient descent for a random forest? Does anyone know? Or would anyone know how, how to implement gradient methods for random forests? Yeah, stochastic gradient descent, but how, how do you uh, update the, the weight or the parameters of a random forest? Uh, so stochastic gradient descent, you, you need the parameters. You need to operate on the parameters of a random forest. And this might be might be not obvious how, how you parameterize. There might be some uh, some tricks to parameterize a random forest, but uh, naturally it's a non-parametric model. And here for, for this generalization, you don't need any parameter vectors. You just need the dot fit function for a random forest. Okay, that's all what I wanted to tell you. Um, are there any questions at this point?